Hi, this is Hash. So I've taken apart this uh, needle LiDAR a little further. Uh, this is pretty much my sacrificial one. Uh, I'm going to take everything apart on it. So I think we're all kind of dying to know what it looks like inside here. So I pulled it apart. So here's the laser module. It's uh, an infrared laser. Uh, this piece actually unscrews as well. So this little bottom part and this top part unscrew. Uh, there's a lens right in there, uh, a little spring that holds tension with everything, and then I believe this screws down to uh, set the the focus of the beam. Uh, it was Loctited when I uh, before I unscrewed it, so uh, I'll pull it apart at some point, take some pictures of it, and show. There's not too much in there other than a diode, uh, a little washer, a spring, and uh, a lens. It's right about there, and then all this just appears to be uh, just an empty tube before the beam comes out. Alright, so like I said, uh, this little laser module unscrews right here. And you can see, sorry about the lighting, uh, the little laser module itself is right inside there. There's what looks like the thinnest little tiny copper washer you've ever seen in your life. A spring, and then, uh, that's funny, and then the, the little uh, lens is inside this tube right here, and it all screws together and it was Loctited. Uh, so I'm not sure who makes this module. I couldn't find any labeling on it. Uh, this piece is epoxied in here, the little laser module. Uh, let's see if you can see inside there. So there's a little laser diode sitting inside there. Uh, then goes this little ring in next, then the spring in the bottom of that, then the whole thing presses together and that screws down. Uh, so you know, I haven't been able to figure out who makes that module. I looked all over for some kind of labeling, but uh, I didn't see anything on it. So. Uh, that part, although while I don't think it's incredibly critical, uh, as long as we can get some laser with a, a decent, you know, spot on it that doesn't diverge too much, uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll matter, but uh, I'll keep digging on it and see if I can find anything. It's, a lot of times it's hard to figure out who made what. Uh, the laser sits right inside there, so you can see that groove right there in the, the back of the plastic pretty much corresponds to this uh, groove right here where it sits in. There's a hole there where it looks like they potentially thought about putting a set screw to come up and uh, maybe use to, to hold everything down, but when this top piece is on right here, I'll rotate it so it kind of sits like that. It flips over and sits on top. Uh, just the, the compression from these screws here and the screws that are in the middle uh, appear to be enough. I mean, it's not under any real force. So that holds it in place just fine, and it looks like they use this uh, kind of these flat ends right here uh, as a means of rotating. So they'll rotate this to get the beam at a point they like, because it's not going to come out exactly uh, parallel with uh, the body of this of this uh, module, basically. So it might be off a tiny bit, so they'll rotate that until everything lines up with what's going to be uh, with the imager over here. So the imaging part is pretty interesting. Uh, the first part is the lens. So we can take the lens out of here. The lens, I believe, uh, from some research, there's a company called Sunex, S-U-N-E-X dot com, that makes uh, lenses. This lens, uh, I took it all apart. Uh, you can unscrew this little uh, piece from the bottom right here. Uh, there's three lenses inside there to... Uh, Plano convex and one that's concave on both sides uh, and they're they're separated it goes uh, the first one from the front here is a, a Plano convex and then a little tiny spacer and then the, the double concave lens and then another little spacer that's a little uh, thicker than the one up front and another Plano uh, con convex lens uh, and then out the back right here so from looking online with just what you can readily buy from uh, say that sunx.com it looks to be the measurements wise of the exterior which I know is kind of irrelevant but uh, the casing and everything seem to fit with a, a 12 millimeter uh, lens that they have on there uh, I'm not exactly sure I haven't done too much uh, with lenses as far as measuring to, to figure out what the, the millimeter of a lens is and I was doing a little research online and so I might screw this lens in place of a, a webcam lens with a known uh, millimeter rating and see if I can you know measure the difference between a zoomed in object and kinda come to some kind of conclusion but I don't think unless I sent this off maybe to some company that does this and told them to tell me what the specs are and make the same lens uh, unless I pay them I don't know if I'll 
figure something out exact, but at the same time I don't know if I need to figure out something exact as long as I can buy one that gives close to the same uh, performance as what this is then I would think it should work similarly uh, and then when you look inside here because they have the the infrared laser that's right here there's a, what's called a, a pass filter which is this little uh, square guy that's sitting right there so let me uh, pull this out set it down right here so that little thing right there looks like a little mirror what it does is basically block visible light and allow uh, a certain wavelength of light through which is very close to what this laser wavelength is or is in the middle somewhere so say it's you know 900 to 950 uh, nanometers that this allows through and then this maybe this is a 925 uh, nanometer laser or something like that so it's some it's some range like that it's only going to allow that through and tries to block all the visible light which means uh, that this uh, little laser rangefinder uh, will work as optimal as it can under all kinds of lighting conditions. And then you'll see here, it's hard to tell, that sensor, uh, the active area is only to, right now the way we're looking at this uh, right hand side. So you know the whole width of that sensor isn't the active area. So they have it offset behind here so that the lens and everything aligns up with uh, that little area right there and I just have the board screwed on to the back of this housing right now uh, so we could see where everything sits the top of it uh, if we look right here you can see here's where uh, they have like a little shield of some kind it looks like it goes right down on the top of the sensor trying to basically contain uh, everything to this little area and it, it kinda looks like they basically you know we talked about uh, on one of my previous posts they they kind of this thing is an exacting fit to uh, that sensor to help center everything. So it looks like kind of you know when it pressed on it it mashes into the the pins a little bit. And uh, there's a little cut out there where the uh, where the pass filter fits in. Well, it looks like they have uh, they have something written on here. I don't know if we'll be able to see that through this. I'll probably have to put some kind of uh, magnification on it. I mean I don't know if it's uh, something about recycling. I mean, it has like a little recycling symbol, so maybe just some information about the plastic that's used. Uh, the other interesting piece is, so this lens, it's a M12 by 0.5 uh, pitch is the, the type of lens when you go to search. If you do an M12 by 0 0.5, uh, you come up with this body size of, of lens that you can buy. Uh, so it's threaded, it's a 0.5 pitch that's on that right there. Uh, and there's nothing that's actually threaded in the Neato LiDAR module. So this whole bottom part here is smooth. You can see there's a, a hole right there for the same kind of uh, potential set screw like with the laser that no, they didn't end up using. I don't know what the little slot is for. Uh, you know, who knows? Uh, but what they did, interesting enough, is you see those two little ridges that are, uh, let me get something here, that are right here. So these two little ridges, uh, they basically what they do is this part here, when you put a screw in here and tighten it down, that's what clamps and holds the lens. These two screws here help hold uh, this entire top piece basically on the, the body itself. So these don't uh, put any pressure on the lens or the laser. The two holes that are here are for the laser to tighten it down and then the one hole that's up here is what locks the lens. But if you tie down this a little bit, then these two ridges basically get uh, threaded by the lens as you screw the thing in. Because this lens case here is uh, what looks like an anodized aluminum. So it's actually a metal body. The little part that screws in in the bottom of the lens is a, uh, it's also an aluminum uh, little threaded insert piece to hold all the lensing inside there. So they actually just use that to, uh, to thread this this little assembly so that they, they kind of semi-tighten the screw down right here, screw the lens in and out, get their focus set, and then tie that down all the way and it holds the focus and then they had a little mark across the top with uh, some pin that they used to, to show the location and you know probably in case something happens or just to show that they did adjust it or something like that. So I thought that was interesting uh, looking at this design really all you need is a way to hold this lens in in some rudimentary fashion 
uh, and then you can kind of lock it down the same way they did and design a module but you could probably make it a lot less intricate than what this is with these curved cutouts and everything else. I mean you could probably just mill a, a groove that would hold that lens in there and that would work out good enough. So I did, uh, I did like that when I saw it. Uh, this laser, now that I've taken it apart, uh, who knows what kind of adjustment it, you know, it's in along with this whole setup here. Uh, I have no idea how you calibrate this and, and really I don't know if it's possible to recalibrate this module without some specialized firmware that, uh, that Neato has. Uh, there's nothing in the menus that look like you know, it would provide valuable information for setting it. I mean, you need some kind of feedback as you're as you're setting things uh, to see where things are in alignment and everything else. And I have a feeling they have different uh, little firmwares they load on, maybe to set that up, uh, unless there's just some hidden menu or something that I'm unaware of. Uh, but like the previous board that you saw, uh, there's the bottom board. Let me grab that real quick. So here's that bottom board that the whole thing sits on. So I pulled everything off of it, all the components. Uh, I've measured everything about it. Uh, so you know everything's cataloged. I drew up a schematic of it. I plan to do the same for this board here, uh, other than a couple little transistors, which might be hard to identify. Uh, capacitors, a little inductor, resistors, everything else uh, should be easy to figure out. And then I'll have a bare board, which I can create a schematic from. Uh, and then that will give us something to, to potentially play around with and uh, quite possibly just remount uh, a board in this same enclosure right here uh, with one of these image sensors on it from uh, Panavision and start to work on our, our own kind of replicated design of this. So, I mean, it looks easy enough with the, the materials people have with uh, all these maker bots and everything else. To, to make something that works. If we can find this lens, which is kind of a, a pain, just to figure out what it is, but now that I found a couple of these companies, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, any laser, uh, pass filters aren't that hard to come by either. So I wouldn't, uh, I don't see any part of this that this seems like it's, it's impossible to make. Uh, the only piece that, you know, that we'll have to work on is programming of, uh, of the DSP that's on there. But even that, uh, you know, with all the open source stuff out there, I think if uh, if we create a board, uh, there'll be enough people that'd be willing to to work on it if they had some hardware to play around with. So that's uh, the next step. Look forward to uh, seeing a schematic of this board, and uh, we'll go from there and uh, just kind of keep tearing this thing down until we get something that we can all have to play with. Thanks for watching.